the national leader in sports media and production, is in Ball State's College of Communication, Information, and Media. SportsLink is developing the next generation of creative storytellers and producers. The best stories in Ball State sports and live productions to ESPN platforms from day one. This is Ball State SportsLink. Victory Honda of Muncie is proud to support the student athletes at Ball State and the students in SportsLink. For more info, visit VictoryMuncie.com. Coming up on this episode of SportsLink Stories, Ball State men's volleyball continues to soar. Ball State softball is shining on the diamond. An immense basketball player has a history in the ring. These and more this month on SL Stories. Every hit, every spike, every goal. Every celebration, every story. From the creative storytellers in Ball State Sportslink, this is Sportslink Stories. Welcome inside the Sportslink studios on the campus of Ball State University for this episode of Sportslink Stories presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. I'm Madison Surface. And I'm Hudson French. These are the best stories in all of Ball State sports all in one place every month from the creative storytellers here in Sportslink. Let's get started. Ball State men's volleyball is climbing the ranks in the nation and that is largely due to the success of Caleb Jenis who ranks second in the nation in kills. He not only brings a beach mentality to the court, but also that southern charm. Back in South Carolina, we have a lot of really nice things. We got palm trees, as far as you can see. The sky's always blue, partly cloudy with some sunshine. It's really nice. My hometown is very close-knit. You see people, you say hi. Everyone's just very nice and they're very caring. I had a lot of support behind me. I had my aunt and my uncle and my mom who all played in college and coached, as well as my beach friends, a bunch of like 30-year-old guys that are really fun to play with on the beach and helped me get better as a player. My first official tournament was in fourth grade with my mom and dad. It was a grass tournament in Columbia, South Carolina. We didn't win, not even close, but it was a fun time. It was a good family event. We did it every year from then on, and I loved it. There's no high school volleyball for boys in South Carolina. They're currently developing a program now after I've left. Probably the biggest challenge was the distance. I had to travel to play and even get acknowledged by any coaches. So I had to travel to play club to Atlanta, Georgia, which is a five hour drive. My parents drove me every weekend on Sunday morning and we practiced for two and a half hours. So that was a, a pain, but it was worth it. It got me to a new club in Charlotte, North Carolina. It really developed me as a player and it was a fun time for me. I enjoyed doing it. I've also been able to travel a bunch of cool places. Like I went to California, it was the Collegiate Beach National Team. It was awesome, it was a great experience to get me in the USA Pipeline. So then a few other things. I've just been all around the country. I've gone to Arizona, Texas, all the way up to New York. I've been, I've been everywhere. The biggest difference is that you have to be an all around player to play beach. There's only two people on the court instead of six, so it requires a lot more like passing and each player has to be good at each skill. So it's just helped me to practice and play. So then it got me to college, I got recruited from my club in Charlotte and got here. Ball State has really helped me to grow and expand outside my shell. I've gotten more comfortable, more social, just happier, honestly. And then on the court also, the transition from when I was a freshman coming in to right now is insane and unbelievable. Caleb Jenis is a, a high spirit, loves volleyball competitor. His passing is next level. His attacking in games, there aren't many guys who can slow him down. And he just, his IQ of the game is, is pretty legit. I'm thankful for all the coaches that have helped me get there, the team, the players, and the staff. It's insane. I'm really happy with where I am and I'm looking to go further. Caleb is, he really is a special player. In my previous role, I've coached three different individuals that were multi-recipients of Player of the Year awards. 
and Caleb is, is that level of a guy. I think he deserves all of the awards slash the team awards that we're going to get because of him at the end of the season because he's, he's that next level and he'll go on to play for a long time after this. He has a different love for the sport and I think that goes such a long way for him. He's just so even kill. He doesn't get too excited and his lows are not too low. And I think that speaks to his volleyball as well, but that's more character and just his vibe. Going forward, I would really like to continue my career in volleyball, whether it be beach or indoor. The most likely possibility is overseas because that's where you can make the best job out of it. But there's also the beach option here if I am to be successful with that. It's undecided, but I'll definitely be playing volleyball in my future. It really took his dedication to the sport to really get to where he is today and that's not an easy task being from South Carolina where not a lot of volleyball but he found it and he did a good job of staying involved. It's awesome. It's everything I've dreamed of. I couldn't be happier. I love Ball State. I love volleyball. I love South Carolina. I'm grateful for all the people that have helped me to get here and I know they're supporting me so it makes me happy that I can actually show them what I'm capable of and make them proud. You can catch Jenis and the Cards in Worthen Arena a few more times this season with home matches on March 31st and April 2nd, followed by the MEVA tournament in mid-April. Be sure to follow SportsLink coverage on the team. Ball State softball recently defeated Missouri, top 20 in the nation, and the pitcher to seal that one was Emma Eubank, earning her first career save. She dreams of leading the Cardinals on the field, but also curing cancer in the laboratory. I'm from Santa Claus, Indiana. It's very festive during Christmas, that's for sure. We have an amusement park called Holiday World, so it gets very busy in the summer as well. It's very, very different. It's a different atmosphere. I'm just so blessed to be here because coming from a small town, you would never think that a small town girl would get this type of opportunity, but I'm just so blessed to be here. I thought sectionals was honestly probably the best part before winning regionals because we went 11 innings and I pitched all 11. Going into regionals, we lost to the same team the year before in the regional championship. We were trying to come back and win it all and that's what we did. Cancer has been a huge part of my family. I've had several aunts and grandparents get diagnosed with cancer. My mom's younger brother at the age of 14 died of brain cancer. My grandparents struggle to this day to just kind of get over his death. It would just be different if he was here with us. I never even met him. The worst part is seeing a child suffer from cancer, not getting a life that they didn't deserve. What really makes Emma special is what she's doing off the softball field. She's in her research lab at least three or four times a week and just kind of hearing what she's doing with mice in that kind of laboratory environment is really fun to hear. Being in that field, the area of medicine would be so awesome to do and just help people out by finding a cure for this horrible disease. Just seeing how this kind of affected my family overall kind of just led me to go in that direction with what I wanted to do with my life. What she's gonna be doing after softball, she's gonna make an impact on the world one day. Just kind of seeing the people around me being affected by cancer as well, it's just taught me a lot about making a difference in the world. I just wanna find a cure for it. I wanna help other people out. I just wanna be there for other people. Emma will definitely not forget where she comes from, and we know she is destined for greatness after her softball career. Now we're going to stay on the softball field for our next story as senior Mackenzie McCarty continues to lead the Cardinals after battling several injuries. Her family and her hometown support continue to motivate her. I'm from Alexandria, Indiana. I grew up on a farm. I was involved in 4-H, um, showing cattle. It taught me so much growing up. I think it's the main reason as to why I'm here at Ball State. I feel like I'm a million miles away from home, but when I'm feeling homesick or I want a home-cooked meal, I just drive down the road. 
My family means everything to me, so, and they're my biggest supporters. They come to as many games as they can. Actually, my great grandmas, uh, they come to everything. They are softball admirers. They just love it. She's got a lot of support around her in this community, so it's really fun to watch her, um, and especially when, when we're home, and she gets to bring you know, her family and friends around, and, and she really is kind of like our, our mother hen of the group. So my freshman year fall, I actually found out that I had torn both labrums and had hip dysplasia on both my hips. And then my junior year, I was feeling really good, kind of getting my rhythm back. Um, and then just before conference started, I broke two fingers and had a bone bruise and another one. Right before I broke my hand, I actually found out that I had retore both my labrums and my hips. Um, and I'm still dealing with that now, and I probably always will be for the rest of my life. My teammates, my family, my friends, just everybody's been so um, supportive and um, been my why, my reason. You know, when she's doing well, the whole team is rallying behind her. You know, it, it's just exciting to watch her, um, especially this year being voted a captain. It's really special for her. That leadership role is a lot to me, and I wouldn't call it pressure or um, trying to fill certain shoes. I'm just being me. My biggest goal is to have fun this year. Over the years, it hasn't been the easiest journey, and I miss having fun with the game that I love the most. Now, after overcoming all of that adversity, it's great to see how much support she's receiving. Absolutely. She is such an inspiration. Now, moving on to the other diamond at the First Merchants Ballpark Complex, the baseball team is off to a strong start in the MAC. And we asked those most influential to the Cardinals to write the players some letters. Let's take a look. Hey, Trenner. It's mom here to tell you how proud I am of you. I cannot begin to tell you how proud of you we are for all you have done in and out of the game of baseball. I am proud of you for the player that you are becoming. I am more proud of how you respect and love this game and how that makes you wish to share it with others. When you were five years old, you played t-ball for the Cardinals here in Texas. I never dreamed that baseball would teach you so many life lessons and take you 987 miles from home to become a Cardinal again and you are always just as excited to step onto the field as you were your first time at age four. Noah Navarro and the helmetless Adam Tellier. You never cease to bring an extra spark. From T-ball in Little League and your first Derek Jeter glove and competitive head first slide into home, to the constant sound of someone hitting in the cage next to the garage for hours off the tee, to that first ever home run in cold water. You've been playing baseball a long time. As soon as you could walk, you were throwing a ball. We have often said you possess qualities that make you a great athlete. These traits will take you far in your baseball career and in life. It's a one nothing walk off and the Cardinals' Mac title dreams are still alive. And you've taught me, taught me that it is not always about the W, that it is about enjoying the experience and the people you train with, hang out with, and compete with. Tyler has been a sports nut since I can remember. Here he is at Ball State University playing ball. You know, one thing I knew about Tyler when he was young, he never quit. You know, he just, uh, he's a good kid and we're very proud of this kid. I mean, we're so proud. How can you not be? Never lose sight of your dreams. Everything you need to achieve them is already inside you. Stay focused, stay confident, enjoy the journey. Katie, Dad, and I believe in you and are supporting you every step of the way. Love you. And hey, swing hard, you never know. You've represented the name on the front of your jersey and on the back with dignity and class. Your family and friends in Texas are all supporting you and the team. Love you, T, Mom. Playing college baseball has been one of your dreams, so go get it. We love you, Mom and Dad. Sportslink's Cam Surdick did such a great job producing that piece. I actually got to help out at the shoot, and it was so fun creating that sandlot feel. Now over to the hard court. Men's tennis has started conference play, and after 50 years of success, head coach Bill Richards continues to guide the team. Take a look at the season preview. 
Last season was, uh, I mean, I thought we had a really good year and a little disappointing. We couldn't win the conference. We felt we were good enough to, to win the, you know, the Mid-American Conference. We fell a little bit short there, but overall we had a lot of good wins last year with um, probably highlighted with the big win over Notre Dame. We really only had a couple of weeks as a team to practice and then we got into our you know, off-season segment so it really became uh, individual commitment uh, for each person to know exactly what um, you know they had to work on and um, so far from what I've seen early in the season I think everyone has done a good job of putting themselves in position to move forward. when I get those big wins or have those days that I play really well, just trying to stay consistent and making sure that I'm doing those things prior to playing those matches that uh, work really well for me. The culture has been probably my favorite thing out of coming to Ball State Tennis. I absolutely love the guys. We get along extremely well. We hang out all the time off the court. Certainly our number one goal is, is to win you know, the Mid-American Conference uh, regular season, win the tournament, go to the NCAA tournament. I uh, have full confidence that this, this team is capable of doing that. We were capable of it last year as well. As a team, I mean, ultimately the goal is just to win the MAC. That's all our eyes are set on right now, is just trying to win the MAC going into the going to the conference season uh, playing well and coming through and potentially coming out with a ring. And that's the ultimate goal in the end. Wow, 50 years of success and still grinding on the court. Now we're gonna shift gears from the tennis courts onto a basketball court and onto the streets of Cleveland. Myron Thomas grew up in the concrete jungle where he found his safe place in the boxing gym. And now in just a few short weeks, he'll graduate from Ball State. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, blood stain. Come on, yeah, come on, yeah, come on. You better give me that, give me that, yeah. I describe Cleveland, Ohio as the jungle. You know, there's beautiful parts of the jungle and there's dangerous parts of the jungle. And I feel like as a native, there are places in Cleveland that you don't want to see. One of them is my community where I grew up. For me, that's the heart of the jungle. That's where I'm from. That's where majority of the crimes happen in Cleveland. We weren't liked by the kids from the other neighborhood. And a couple of times where I would go out with my friends just to have fun, and we would get caught in sticky situations where we didn't know if we was gonna make it home safe. My mother, but she was going through so much with trying to make more money to provide See my mother struggle, see my mother going through mental breakdowns. It, it kind of encouraged us to have her back. So whenever I get to my low points or I get to my mental breakdowns, I'll call my mother and we'll talk on the phone and we'll just let everything out. Life without a father didn't affect me until I would say I was around 13 or 14. My voice started to get deeper. I started to really develop muscles and I started to look for a father to be able to say, okay, I want to be like him. I talked to my father the Christmas of 2020, and we had sat down for two or three days over the phone for several hours, and we just tried to talk everything out. I tried to find ways to try to rekindle the relationship that we should have had over the past 15, 20 years. And within the next week, slowly but surely, the communication just disappeared. Boxing is one of the one areas when I was a kid that could steer my mind 
and it could be the, the anesthesia that I needed for my mind to just get away from things. I could go hard on hitting the bag and just focus in on that bag and that's the only thing that I would think about for the next two or three hours that I'm there. I didn't even know that I was fighting in the Golden Gloves. I was undefeated at the time. Something happened to another kid who was from another part of the country and they said that you're in it now so you got three weeks to get ready for this fight. If you win this fight, all you have to do is win three more and you go to gold champion. And I was completely bought in. I had never won a championship or never won a medal yet. So for me, it was like my first chance to be number one, to be great. So I just took it on and just ran through it like a bull who sees red. It was kind of more so therapy for me. My therapy for me was working. Uh, I had a friend named Muddy at the time. He was the only one of my friends who would tell me, hey man, you special, you know? Eventually, you gotta get up out of here. But me, at the time, being 15, 16, I'm only thinking about what's, what's coming in the next hour or two, you know? How are we finna make some money, or what party are we gonna go to, or what girls are we going to meet? And he used to always tell me when we would just sit in his basement and just watch TV, he was like, hey man, you, you special, you know? He would always tell me that, but I didn't ever really took him serious until it was too late. The, he knew that I would become something. And he was with 20 year olds when it happened. He was with guys that was way above our age group. I was actually at the gym working out. And I got done working out and I got 20 missed calls and 30 text messages. He had found out some information on a guy who had killed an older guy who was from our community. And once, once the grapevine had got out that Muddy had knew that information, he was now a liability. the city of Cleveland with five homicides and four shootings just in the last 48 hours. I would say that was probably one of the lowest points in life. My junior year went well. It was my first season, first full season of playing basketball. I had the opportunity, thanks to my mentor, Richard Starr, I was able to play for King James Shooting Stars, which was in one of the most top AAU leagues, the EYBL. And I was a role player on that team at times, but I had fell in love with being on a great team. We had the top players from the state, and I was one of the guys that made it. So once I got my first scholarship after the first two or three weeks of playing AAU ball, it, it meant the world to me. It meant the world to me that I committed too early. I didn't have somebody in my corner who knew the recruiting game. So for me, I had fell in love with a college coach who was just telling me anything that I wanted to hear. I committed because for me, I had achieved what I needed to achieve. I just got free, free school. I had a free Division I University scholarship and I was well on my way. I really only, only end up leaving because of the lack of me knowing the recruitment process when I was in high school and the relationship that the coaches had established with players. You know, it was, it was an awful relationship. I was looking for somewhere that I had the most room to grow. 
I didn't want to be the tallest plant. I wanted to be the plant that had the most roots, you know, because over time that plant's going to be the one that lasts the longest. So I was looking for the place that had the biggest room for me to grow. It just felt like it was supposed to work. It felt like this is where I needed to be. I've grown much more outside of basketball than I have as a player. Uh, I've gotten talented. I've gotten more talented. I've been able to de develop the jump shot. Uh, my freshman year in college basketball, I shot like 17% from three, and now I'm a career 40% shooter here at Ball State. But outside of the game, I've developed to become a man. You know, I've got the right mentors here. I've got the right people surrounding me to make sure that my head is on straight, you know. So I would say I've developed way more as a person than I have as a player. I believe that playing professionally is in my, in my near sight, but I also feel that there are many things to come. I have a lot. I have a lot in my bag. I have a lot of tools in my bag. I plan to start an AAU team. I plan to start a team, a basketball team. I want to have a team and I want to coach that team, you know, because one thing that I have gotten better at as a player is the mental part of the game. And I feel like I can give that to the next, to the next generation. And if I do ever come across a kid that comes from King Kennedy, I'm going to be on that kid at hard. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to want that kid to be the next LeBron James. I'm just ready for that surreal, that surreal moment when I can just sit back and say, hey man, I did that. Like, it was a journey, an adventure, and I conquered it. It's inspiring to see how Myron continues to excel with every opportunity. And with that, our show has come to an end. Wherever you may be watching, online, television, or streaming, we thank you for spending the last 30 minutes with us here in SportsLink. And for the best stories in Ball State sports, live broadcasts, and cinematic highlights, follow us at BSU Sports Link on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And we'll see you next month for the next episode of SL Stories presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. The national leader in sports media and production is in Ball State's College of Communication, Information, and Media. SportsLink is developing the next generation of creative storytellers and producers. The best stories in Ball State sports and live productions to ESPN platforms from day one. This is Ball State SportsLink.